What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a great day. It's time for another one of our bi-monthly garden tours where we go around all 10 plots, show you what's going on around here. Some things are kind of winding down. As you'll see, take it easy on me. Got a broke back. We're doing the best we can keeping everything managed around here. Been a lot of rain here lately. Had a good bit from uh, Tropical Storm Elsa come through here. Seems like it's been raining every afternoon. This is the first day, I believe, in a couple weeks it hasn't rained any. So it's kind of soggy, but hopefully it'll dry out soon and we can get some things tended to around here. So we'll start off in this plot where we got our arch bean trellis. There's a few straggler beans in there. One of the neighbors came over and picked some of them the other day. We've got all we want to put up. Uh, we'll see what they do. I'm probably going to end up when I can ditching this uh, these butter beans here and trying to plant something else on it. We'll just see how the time works but the plants are still looking nice and good and uh, these might make again in fall. Who knows? We'll just have to see. Over here we've got our okri planted. Still good production from this. From the Jing orange there. From the Perkins long pod and what's interesting these plants these emerald green velvets get so much taller than the rest of these so these get a lot taller a lot quicker because we've treated all these pretty much the same so those are getting pretty tall and another couple feet they'll be too tall to harvest and we may just take these and start saving some seeds from them as opposed to trying to reach up there and harvest them then here we've got this ruiz heirloom okra and this stuff's on about three foot tall now. I thought I saw a pod on it the other day, but I guess I didn't. Some of the leaves, or excuse me, some of the branches on this are red, which tells me this may be a red potted okra. We'll just have to see. I guess I haven't seen any flowers. Looks like we're gonna get some flowers soon, but maybe that's just more leaves. I don't know, we'll have to see here. But the plants are looking really good. And then to this plot where our nightshade jungle is, we're still getting some decent production from the tomatoes, but some of them are kind of winding down a little bit. We can start to see a little bit of death and disease, which is primarily a result of all this rain we've been having. These determinants here on this row, they'll be done pretty soon. We may hang on to a few of those indeterminates there for a little longer. We'll just see. These um, experimental varieties here actually look better than any of them these uh celebrity plus big boy plus and big beef plus you can see they're just sprawling all over the place so i'd say those are some good varieties hopefully they'll be available to the public this coming year peppers are looking real good never seen bell peppers get this tall those are on up there about four foot tall same thing with some of these banana peppers down here Real good production from the peppers. I'm having to pick those pretty regular or somebody's been having to pick them pretty regular. So those are still pumping it out, looking nice and green. Really been liking these uh, pimento type peppers here. See, we got some orange ones. We also got some red and yellow ones. And then I think one of my favorites so far has been this heatless habanero here. I don't know if you can see in there, but those things are loaded. And they're really, really good and sweet. No heat at all on those guys. I need to just rip these tomatillos out of here. Haven't been able to tend to those. And I'm sure I'm going to get a bazillion volunteers from a lot of those that have dropped on the ground. But I need to get some of this stuff out of here soon just so we can clean it up a little bit. And we're going to use this spot or this plot as kind of a compost dumping pad when we can get another load in here. Another pepper I'm excited about that I haven't tried in a few years are these Tabascos here. We can see those puppies are loaded. Loaded. We could make pepper sauce with those now, but I usually like to wait on them to turn. But these plants are big, almost about five foot tall, and just loaded with these tiny little peppers. These things are a little bit of a booger to pick because they're so small. It takes a lot of them to make a batch of hot sauce, but it's going to be good once we get a, a nice harvest off these once they turn a little color. Here's some of that death or disease we're starting to see on these indeterminates. That's a uh, German Johnson there. It's starting to look pretty weak. Still getting a, a decent amount of big tomatoes off these Kellogg's breakfast here. That's probably one of my favorites so far that I've grown this year. Still getting some nice big tomatoes. That's a monster right there. So those guys still kicking along, so we're going to leave those for a little bit longer. And here's a table full that our neighbor harvested for us 
couple days ago nice pretty tomatoes there hopefully somebody will come and pick these up and put them up in jars or something preserve the harvest tons of nice little cherry tomatoes there too not a whole lot going on over here on this side of the barn this is where we planted those three rows of oak tree on the last video got all that empty space over there need to wheel hoe that once it dries up and probably gonna get some cover crops planted there haven't decided what i'm gonna plant yet but uh probably gonna make me a little cocktail and kind of the same thing where we had our sweet corn here i did have somebody kind of get this somewhat cleaned up but it needs to be tilled to level it out and everything but i want to get a cover crop planted here soon if we can get this tilled up over here in the dream garden our sweet potatoes are looking fabulous really really good growing on top of those hills there so we've got the georgia jets there then we've got the mirasaki there the puerto rico here and then the vardaman there nice um just nice nice looking foliage on those guys haven't noticed any insect pressure yet i think it's interesting how different the leaf structure is comparing these varieties so you can see that one there kind of looks like a lily pad the vardaman does the Puerto Rico looks quite different there. The Murasaki kind of has three lobes on it there. Almost looks like an oak leaf. And the Georgia Jet over here looks more like the um, Puerto Rico. So inter interesting to compare those four varieties there, how they look as far as the leaves go. And uh, should be fun digging those guys in another month or two this kale just amazes me every day how it's still kicking along and hasn't bolted yet and now i'm i'm kind of got the goal in mind see if i can have this stuff in the garden an entire year i think we planned it last october so still got a few months of hot weather to survive but it's still producing tasty vegetables for us Here's that uh, experimental variety of sweet potatoes from NC State. It took a little bit to get going because we planted draws instead of slips. Got a little weeding to do here. Need to heal this up. Give it some of that um, potassium. So a little work to do on these guys to get them caught up with those over there. This plot here is where we have our knuckle hole peas, our Crowder field peas. They're Brooklyn planted. We've got four double rows in here. These guys are looking really, really good. She's been in here and thinned all these out. And uh, rows look far apart, but these things will put off some foliage and fill in those gaps pretty good. Probably need to get in here with a wheel hoe soon and get a little bit of that grass out of there. But really happy with how these guys are looking so far. Now this plot right here is pretty cool. This is our popcorn. And I've never grown popcorn before, but I always thought the plants kind of stayed pretty short, that they were like short as sweet corn or shorter. But these are huge these are on up there seven foot tall in some spots if you go to the tip of the tassel some of this could be eight foot tall and it's just looking nice and green and pretty i got this one plant here that's got some worm damage on it but and i haven't sprayed any of it we may spray some spinosad once those uh silks start appearing but just beautiful looking corn and we haven't given this anything but some of that nature safe organic and uh one shot of fish emulsion and it's just green and healthy as it can be you can see the tassels right there starting to get tassels all over it and i thought i saw yeah that's the beginning of what will be a ear there no silks on it yet but you can see the tiny ear forming right there so really really happy on popcorn so far we're gonna have tons of popcorn off just these six rows right here the rain has did a number on our second summer squash planting here as you can see there these plants probably need to be pulled out of here pretty soon it wasn't super you know um overwhelmed or um impressed by that heirloom costata romanesca but i really like that hybrid that we grew on that end I also really like this goldfinch squash, this yellow squash, but it, it gets really tall. It kind of grows upright and it gets so tall it kind of falls over. It's almost like you need to grow up beside a T-post and kind of tie it up and let it grow upright. But we got some good harvest off those guys. The zephyrs probably look the best of any of them in here. and uh, But we're getting some 
you can see right there we're getting some mildew on there that's what happens when it just rains for two weeks straight let me back up here and show you these cucumbers so i really really enjoyed this variety so far the supremo cucumber uh, seems pretty disease resistant doesn't seem near as diseased as that squash is over there we got a little bit here but you're gonna get with all that wet humid weather we've been having but these things are heavy heavy producers i mean look at all those flowers on them there and one thing i like is it just makes a really nice cucumber you can see there it's just a nice blocky it's a little more blocky than other varieties i've grown just a pretty little pickle there and all of them are pretty consistently this size so i like the consistency on it i can see why the commercial guys around here grow this variety and i'll probably definitely grow it again it's filling up the trellis nice and it looks like we're gonna have some good production from this variety for at least another two to three weeks over here in our no-till plot we've got some cleanup to do we've got those kabocha squash out here those kushel squash it's just vines there uh, we didn't even harvest those autumn gold butternuts because they weren't worth harvesting in my opinion our giant pumpkin plants still look okay but i have noticed the giant pumpkins haven't really grown anymore i think they're kind of topped out done all they gonna do so we need to get somebody in here who can pick these guys up maybe we'll take the biggest ones to a scale i'm guessing about 75 pounds i don't know if i got one in there that's uh over 100 pounds but i think i probably got several that are in the 50 to 75 pound range i stopped pruning them at some point just because i get couldn't get in there so we got several of them that look smaller like this that are probably more 25 pounds the oldest one in here so as they get older they seem to kind of develop a more bright orange color they start out kind of tan like that guy right there is and then as they sit out here longer they get a little more brighter orange on them so i think that guy right there has probably done all he's gonna do and uh, we'll try to get him get him out of here and see how much he weighs over here in our melon plot this was looking a lot better before we got all that rain and these giant melons if you've been keeping up with the videos we've been uh, cutting open one here and there they just won't ever get ripe well they're massive i mean some of these look to be close to 50 pounds especially that guy right there and the tendrils dry when you cut them open it's just not even close to being ripe so i figured with all that rain these things would burst but they haven't yet we just got some monster monster that's probably the biggest one right there that thing is huge just monster watermelons out of here now over here we can't really see that well but we've got some canary melons planted that have kind of just gotten taken over by all the watermelon vines see if i can get right here there we go so there's a canary melon right there we'll just have to see if those make or not we got a decent amount of fruits out there so we'll just see what happens there this is our last planting of watermelons we planted these latest and i need to get brooklyn out here to check some of these this is that orange meated watermelon i think it's called orange crisp or orange crunch but i got a few out here like that guy it looks like he might be ready to harvest not a ton of production out here on this variety but uh there's probably 10 or 15 watermelons out there and then lastly we've got our flower and herb plot here where some things are looking really good and some things aren't looking so good this tarragon here i can't tell if that's suffering from all the rain or because stella likes to get in here and waller either way we still got plenty of tarragon in there to use in the house when we're cooking still got our thyme over here still got some sage and then the garlic chives down the end are looking good basil still kicking just kind of leaving that for the bees to feed on they're tearing it up right now you see that guy right there i need to um, get brooklyn with the uh, hedge trimmers out here and trim that again and it keep growing it's just like we did with this thai basil i've never seen thai basil get this big it just looks like a hedgerow so that's the trick right there it's just coming out here with those hedge shears and trimming it and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and just looks beautiful and the bees love it we won't ever eat that much thai basil we might try drying some of it i just like the way it looks it's just pretty looks like something you'd see in a fine gardening magazine our deal is done as you see here it's 
waiting on this to dry out a little bit more but we're going to go in here and harvest all these little dill seeds here we can use those to make pickles or we can just save the seeds and plant them next year we've got a lot of dried pods out here so we'll uh, harvest these and just shake them off into a bag or a little canister or something and save us a bunch of dill seeds the borage has not enjoyed all the rain it was looking good but now it looks terrible looks like we probably need to go ahead and scrap it. I don't know if it's gonna recover. Got a bunch of ones that died down there. So it didn't care for all that moisture. Marigolds, you about can't kill marigolds. They're just so tough. They look really, really good. Our Celosia still looks really, really good. Ageratum still looks really, really good. Bees are all over that. As you can see that guy there. So that still looks good. Nasturtium is done. Need to get that out of here. The balsam is still kicking. Zinnias are still kicking, although some of them fell over. We probably need to prune those up, get those cleaned up a little bit. Lacy Facilia doesn't care for the heat. It's toast. Need to clean that up, plant something else there maybe. This Cosmos, this orange Cosmos, which I really, really like, is still going strong, looking really, really good. This other Cosmos over here, I can't remember what this variety is called, but it's a pink, red, and white Cosmos. I don't care for it at all. I'm not gonna grow this one anymore, but I really, really like this orange and yellow one here. And I've cut that one back hard several times and it just keeps growing back, keeps getting bushier and bushier. So as you can see there, some things are winding down. Got some death coming along with some of these plants. So now we're kind of in cleanup mode. We still got some stuff to harvest. We'll be harvesting this popcorn whenever it gets ready, sweet potatoes, you know, the okri. But most of this stuff is winding down and then we'll get into full warm season cover crop mode for a month or two. And then come mid to late August, we'll really start thinking about fall stuff. Ideally, I like to put cool season fall crops in the ground at the beginning of October. It varies from year to year. Some years summer lasts really long and you, you're pushed back to the middle of October. Sometimes fall comes early and you can get some cool stuff in the ground at the end of September. It just varies from year to year, but I usually don't start thinking about it until the middle of August or so. I know some of you that are up north have to start thinking about it a lot sooner than that. So we're just gonna kind of focus on getting some of this stuff cleaned up around here, taking care of what we got that's still growing. We're getting the rest of everything harvested and cleaned up so we can get some cover crops in the ground, kind of restore our soils, keep them from getting overran with weeds, and just take a little bit of a break, and then we'll get back full swing come fall where we'll be planting a lot of cool weather crops, cool weather vegetables, collards, broccoli, cauliflower, all kind of good stuff, but also some cool season cover crops as well. So I hope you enjoyed the garden tour. Now I want to take you inside and let's go make some pickles. Like I said, these Supremo pickles are just beautiful. And uh, I got my little fermenting crock in there and I think these are gonna be perfect to make some spears with. So let's go make some pickle spears. All right, let's make some pickles with some of these Supremo cucumbers I showed you earlier. And I didn't mention this on the garden tour, but another thing I like about these or this particular pickle variety is that they don't have any spines. I have a few little bumps on there, but no spines. Some varieties you grow, you kind of got to wipe off the spines before you pickle them because you don't want to be eating those spines. But these are pretty much spineless, just a few little bumps there. So I really like this Supremo variety. All right, so we're going to do fermented pickle spears today. And I want to say it's been a year or two since we actually did any traditional pickles, you know, hot water bath, preserving them in jars. I just like this fermenting so much better. It's easier to do, doesn't take as long. Once you ferment them in here, you can put them in jars in the fridge and they'll usually keep for a few months. Around here we can grow cucumbers in the spring. In the early summer we can grow cucumbers in the fall. So I can keep pickles in the refrigerator year round just by doing this fermentation process. We don't have to fool with all the water bath and all that. Nothing wrong with that. We did that for years, but once I kind of got into this fermentation stuff, I like it a lot better. I like the kind of twang the pickles have, a little different taste than if you hot water bath them, and just like doing it this way. So let me show you what we need for this. First of all, you need a fermentation crock. 
So this is one made by Ohio Stoneware. This is a one gallon version. This is the version I kind of use for experimentation purposes. I have a five gallon, but once it's full, I can barely move it at full strength. Definitely can't move it now with my back. Brooklyn can't move it. So we're gonna have to do all our fermenting in this one gallon crock. With that crock, you have to have your fermentation weights. You got two of those and then you've got your lid here. And if you don't have one of these, whether it be one gallon, three gallon, or five gallon. If you grow a garden and you don't have a fermentation crop, you need to get one. It is a fun thing to use to preserve some of your vegetables. And the fermented vegetables are really good for you. So we got our crop there. We got our pickles here. So I took a bunch of these that were all about the same size. And I just cut off the ends and I quartered them. In spears like you see there this may be more than can fit in that gallon container uh, I don't know we'll see but this seemed about like the right amount we got plenty of them in the fridge so I got my pickles there got these dill seeds here so I showed you that dill earlier that was going to seed in the uh, herb garden so I took some of those I'm trying not to spill them and I just kind of flaked them off in this bowl here so we'll use those to give some good flavor to these pickles I had a dill plant near the house here in a container that the kids planted and it had some dill leaves on it still good that weren't dried up so and that smells good we're going to use a little bit of this as well then we've got some garlic I always like to use a little garlic in here so our elephant garlic that's out there in the barn it's all dried looking like this I've already peeled some of those so we'll put two or three of those in there now if I was just making this for myself I would put a hot pepper in there too, but since the kids in Brooklyn will be eating these, we're not gonna make them too spicy. We're just gonna go with the dill seasonings and the garlic. Then we've got our brine here, which is basically just salt water. I go with a ratio of two tablespoons of pickling or cannon salt uh, per quart of water here. So this is two quarts of water. I use four spoons of pickling salt, dissolved it in here. That's our brine that we'll pour over the vegetables. And the last thing, which is not completely necessary, but definitely helps if you got it, is grape leaves. This keeps everything submerged under the brine. Also keeps everything nice and crunchy. And we got plenty of grape leaves out there. So let me show you how easy this is to do. Okay, I know it's a little dark in here, but hopefully you can see this. So we're gonna kind of layer our pickles and the spices a little bit. So put a few in there like that. Then, We'll go in here with a couple sprigs of this dill. Just throw the whole thing in there. Sprinkle some of these dill seeds in here. And then I'll cut this garlic a little bit. It'll stretch farther if we cut it. Uh-oh, lost a piece. That'll be all right. Put a little garlic in there. And then we'll just add some more pickles. Or what will be pickles. Add some more dill. Where'd it go? Here it is. A few more sprigs of that in there. Add some more of our dill seeds here. Be nice and dilly pickles. Add a little more garlic. And then we'll put the rest of them in here. Looks like they're all going to fit. Kind of pack those in there a little bit. All right, our last piece of dill. A few more of these dill seeds here. That should be good. And then the rest of this garlic. There we go. And now we need to put our grape leaves on top here. I'm gonna keep everything submerged. That's probably good. Then we'll go in here with our weights, put both weights in there. And then we start pouring our brine in there. And last time I used this thing, I was doing those pepper and chinis and I made the mistake of filling it up too much. And once it started fermenting, it kind of, some of the brine started kind of oozing out the sides, but I, I got, I think this is a lot better. You don't want to fill this thing up too much. So we're gonna just fill it up so the water comes over the top of those grape leaves there with our brine and there we go only took two quarts there 
just gonna put our top on it. That's all we gotta do. Now isn't that a heck of a lot easier than fooling with jars and a water bath and all that? I mean, that literally took about a minute and a half. So, so much easier. And in my opinion, they taste so much better when fermented like that as opposed to water bath. And they also stay crunchier. Sometimes the heat of the water bath can make them a little soggy over time. These are nice and crunchy when you ferment them like that. Got plenty of dill seeds left. We'll probably save some of those for planting next year. We'll also put some in a little container in the cupboard case we want to pickle anything else. We've got plenty of dill seeds we can do that with. And still got plenty of cucumbers here. This I'll let go for probably seven days or so and then I'll give it a try, see how close it is. And um, I think seven to 10 days. I'm gonna have to look at my fermenting book, but I think that's about um, what I usually go with on these fermented pickles. So after seven to 10 days, we'll check them. And if they're good, then we'll go ahead and do us another batch and we'll just kind of small batch it up until we get, you know, I don't know, five or six little jars in the fridge there so we have a nice supply of pickles. And if you've got any fermented pickle recipes, any additions to the process that I just showed there, anything you'd like to add in there for a little extra flavor, definitely let me know in the comments below and we'll give it a try on our next batch. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life